Hi guys, welcome back to the latest video. Today we are covering the leaks from chapter 319 of My Hero Academia that just came out today. So from what I've skimmed so far, this looks to be an amazing chapter. So without further ado, let's hop right in the video. So the chapter starts with a flashback from a few days after Deku left UA and we're seen with Bakugo ripping the letter and Shoto and Tokoyami are with him. They say it's only a guest, but they think Deku's with Endeavor and the other pro heroes. And Ida asks why they don't just call the pros to confirm the guests since they're the mentors. But the three of them say Endeavor, Hawks, and Genus are not picking up their phones. Shoto says he understands they must be extra busy right now, but it's fishy nonetheless. They're definitely hiding something. Jiro agrees and adds that All Might hasn't come back to UA either. Ojiro says their classes have been suspended, they're still waiting to advance to the next school year, and that the hero course is now basically just staying at standby in the dorms and patrolling the area around UA. So what's kind of notable is we see Bakugo rips up the letter. Um, as I suspected, Bakugo in Bakugo fashion is mentally saying to Deku, listen, you're not the only one who's pushing to be number one, you're not the only one who's trying to stop all for one, they've been rivals and... For lack of a better term, um, really close friends for all of this time, despite their intense rivalry. And it makes almost no sense that Deku would just simply get up and leave. Bakugo doesn't need to be protected by Deku. Bakugo can stand on his own, and they, they fought alongside in this war, so I can see why Bakugo is so frustrated. Bakugo then states that if Deku is so afraid of going back to UA and attracting the villains there, there's no way he went back just to leave those letters. He asked someone else to do it. Probably All Might. Bakugo also says that he knows Deku and All Might better than Endeavor and the others do, and that he knows the two of them will eventually get themselves into trouble. This again, as Bakugo was the only other person to know of the secret of One for All, Bakugo knows All Might and Deku pretty well, and obviously he thinks that All Might has something to do with this. And as he... And given that he knows All Might and Deku so well, yeah, they are going to get into trouble. They take things into their own hands without considering that, hey, yeah, maybe we do need allies, we do need help. So Class A decides to contact Endeavor, but they really don't know how to do so. So Ochacho remembers that he's a UA alumni. And a few days later, Nezu calls Endeavor to the principal's room, where all the students are waiting for him. And Shoto tells his father to explain why he's been ignoring his calls and texts. He asks if he forgot their talk in the hospital about stopping Toya, to which Endeavor responds he didn't, and that those words have been guiding him since then. I've also been personally curious as to what's been going on with the whole Toya situation. As they mentioned, they would stop him as a family, but I guess there's a lot of other things going on right now, obviously. So I'm sure Horikoshi will get to that soon enough. And Shota blames Endeavor for letting Deku and All Might by themselves, and Bakugo intervenes. He says that Endeavor thinks it's the right thing to do because he doesn't understand Deku. Here we see again... Bakugo emphasizing the fact that he knows Deku better than anyone and that these people are fools for letting Deku do what he did. According to Bakugo, Deku is screwed up in the head and never thinks about his own good. And since All Might used to be that way during his time as the symbol of peace, he's unable to stop Deku. He says that those two cannot stay together right now. There's a short flashback of the pros receiving the news that Deku said he doesn't need All Might's help anymore. They say they wish they were fast enough to follow him around. He's about to say something while taking out his phone out of his pocket, but Sarah interrupts, asking if it has a GPS feature. This is really interesting, actually. I never really suspected that Bakugo would encourage for Deku and All Might to split up, given that that's not only Bakugo's idol, but obviously Deku's idol as well, and given that he was the number one hero, it made sense for them to stick together. But Bakugo has a good point. When All Might was in his prime, he never thought of himself the same way Deku doesn't think of himself. I don't entirely agree with this philosophy by Bakugo. I feel like All Might is encouraging Deku to take a step back and that he doesn't need to take on the world himself. But, you know, um, that's not necessarily the opinion or the view of Bakugo up to this point. Endeavor didn't answer verbally the question, but he threw his phone to them while Sarah caught the phone together with Mineta. Sarah asked whether it's okay for them to borrow the phone or not, since he was just someone who happened to be in the same class as Deku. Koda said that he was also just someone who spent a year in the same class, and then Shoto continued by saying that he was shocked because Deku didn't share his troubles regarding One for All with him. And then Ida continued by saying how Class 1A will follow him because no matter how big of a deal One for All is, Midoriya is their friend. And they can't smile while knowing their friend is walking a thorny road. And reading this just gave me chills. I love that no matter what, no matter what path Deku has tried to take, 
Ida, Bakugo, his classmates, they don't care whether Deku believes that what decision he's making is for the betterment of them and for their safety. Midoriya is their friend, not just their classmate, and they will follow him to the gates of hell to ensure that he can be safe and they can smile together again. This is why I love the unison that their class has developed over these years. Nezu then told him that it's okay to bring him back to UA. He explained he was agreeing to Deku's own will to not return. However, the moment they agreed to accept him into UA, he became the student that they must protect. Endeavor asked about the refugees, and Nezu explained that UA is currently letting them stay, but is still not the official evacuation area, and he will do something about it. He said it will be okay because All Might, as the previous predecessor, also went to UA. The next panel was when the rest of the class arrived in Kamino. Momo announced that the jailbreaker was successfully caught and said good job Bakugo, to which Bakugo corrected to great explosion murder god Dynamite. I kind of forgot that that was his name. To which Momo apologized. The citizens were free from the dictator's control. Deku asked why they are here, and Uraraka said because they were worried. Deku said that he's fine, so they shouldn't worry and leave instead. Bakugo then clapped his hands as he smiled sarcastically, saying, That's great, as expected from the one-for-all predecessor. And then he proceeded to ask him seriously, So can you smile now? Deku stayed silent and said, In order to smile and to make everyone feel at ease, I need to go. Deku activated his quirk and told everyone to move away, to which Bakugo answered, Then make us move, all might want to be. Ida and Uraraka were also in the panel, ready to fight. And the chapter ends here. So as predicted from my last video, and as I'm sure a lot of other fellow YouTubers predicted, Class 1A was pulling up with Bakugo, and like I, like I thought, Deku is not willing to go with them. And as a result, they're kind of at a standstill now whether Deku will fight them or not. As we saw in my last prediction video, I don't believe that Deku's going to fight them. I don't believe that Bakugo is going to fight Deku. If there is a fight that breaks out, it's merely because Deku won't go along with them. This isn't a fight of any type of enjoyment from either of the parties. This is instead a, a fight to determine whether Bakugo will be able to bring Deku back to UA or Deku will continue his solo vigilante mission. I'm sure the decision is going to split the audience a fair amount. I know people are really enjoying the solo emo boy Deku, which of course I am too. But at the end of the day, I want Deku to succeed while being alongside his classmates and those he cares about. I actually just released a video about the potential of Uraraka, and I believe that instead of fighting, in fact, Uraraka will be the voice of reason for Deku, and she'll be the one to remind Deku of who he is, that he's Izuku Midoriya, not just purely a hero. Another notable thing from this chapter, at, the, at least at the end of it, I really thought it was interesting that, that Bakugo's kind of prodding Midoriya by calling him an All Might wannabe, really trying to get under his skin, but clearly you can see Bakugo under the shell of of being kind of a bully at times, he really does love Deku and he wants Deku to come home with him. And this is just huge character progression from Bakugo as a character from the person that he once was in these very first few episodes as a complete bully to Deku to who he is now, a man willing to risk it all to bring home his friend and to make sure his friend doesn't fight alone. So guys, a ton of things happen in this chapter, so if you enjoyed this breakdown, please don't forget to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you all next time.